So before we begin to talk about radicals, I want to remind you about some exponent rules. So the first exponent rule is if we have two things being multiplied with a common base, so I have x and x as my common base, we can take their exponents, so let's say the exponents here were a and b, we can take those exponents and add them to get our uh, product. So x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. And if I was going to divide the same values, as long as they have the common base, the answer is going to have that same common base, and we're going to subtract their exponents. And then the last exponent rule is if you have something with an exponent, so I'll take x to the a, and you raise it to another exponent, you're actually going to, oops, you're actually going to multiply those two exponents for your product. Actually, not your product, your, your simplified answer. So those are our exponent rules. And now I want to remind you about some radical rules that you actually know already. So if you have a radical, I'm going to say it's an nth root of a, and we would like to multiply that with the nth root of b, you are allowed to combine those into one root, so I'm going to make that the nth root of a times b, but that's only allowed if the nth root of a and the nth root of b are real numbers. Okay, so you have to be very careful with that. So let's try an example. Uh, the square root of 8x cubed y times the square root of 2xy to the fifth. So notice that individually you can't take the square root of 8 and get an integer. You can't take the square root of 2 and get an integer. But if you were to multiply these together, we would get the square root of 16 which is a perfect square. So it's really a good idea to multiply things before you start to simplify. And then according to our exponent rules, x cubed times x is x to the fourth, y times y to the fifth is y to the sixth. So now I have one radical that I'm going to simplify. And we know that the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the fourth would be x and the square root of y to the sixth would be y to the third. Okay, so, oops, I made a mistake here, sorry. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. I knew something was wrong. Okay, so now let's take a look, see if we need any absolute values. We have an even index, we have even exponents, this is an even exponent, so that's all right, that's going to be safe. And over here, the y has an even exponent, and the result has an odd exponent. So we're going to need some absolute values on that y cubed. Okay, so that was a nice example of this multiplication rule of radicals. And let me just write down the division rule. So if I have the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b, I can combine that into one radical, which would be the nth root of a over b. But again, this is only okay if the nth root of a and the nth root of b are real numbers. So here's an example of that. Let's do the square root of 20a cubed b. Let's divide that by the square root of 2a squared b squared. Okay, so again, I think it's a good idea to simplify first. So I'm going to combine these into one radical. So we would have the square root of 10. Let's see, a to the third divided by a squared, that's just a. And b divided by b squared is actually b to the negative 1, but nobody likes negative uh, exponents, so I'm just going to leave that as over b. So now we've combined this, and you might say, okay, we're done. 
But I just want to point out something. This is really the square root of 10a over the square root of 10b, or square root of b. So most people uh, who are more advanced in their mathematics don't like this answer because it has a root, a radical, in the denominator. And it doesn't make for very nice calculations. So I would like to rationalize this. And you may have done this before. You may not. But I, want you to point, I just want to point out that to rationalize something means to get the radical in the denominator to not be a radical anymore. So the only thing that we can do is to multiply this fraction by 1. But I'm not going to write 1 over 1. I'm going to write root b over root b. Let me explain why. I know that when I multiply these two root b's, I will get the square root of b squared, which is b. So I created a square in the radicand, right, b squared, which is the inverse of square rooting. So now on top I have the square root of a, b, over b. Let me just do one more quick example. What if I had 1 over the cube root of a, and I wanted to rationalize that? That would mean that I could multiply by 1, but 1 in the form so that in this denominator, I would get something cubed that would then be q rooted. Right now, it's just an a. I would really like to have an a cubed. So if you multiply by a squared, you're actually not allowed to multiply something inside a, a radicand and something outside a radicand. That's not going to work. But we could multiply by the cube root of a squared on both the numerator and denominator. And now I would have the cube root of a squared over a. And that would be rationalized. So let's try some practice problems.